Hello guys, welcome back to PW Medit YouTube channel. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to strategize for the upcoming NEET PG 2024. If you're an aspirant going to give this exam, or if you're going to be a future aspirant who's planning or targeting the NEET next FMG INST exam, this will be an ultimate guide, or I may say it's a secret success to ace any competitive exam in the medical curriculum. If you're first time to this channel, I'm Dr. Ranjit, the pathology faculty at PW Medit. Do subscribe. Let's learn more together. We'll be strategizing for each and every exam and we'll make sure the learning of medicine becomes amazing, fun, interactive, and a pleasurable manner. So coming back to our topic. So today's topic is about the NEET PG 2024 exam is definitely going to come in near future. So what are we going to do? What are the do's? What are the don'ts? Where to focus, where not to focus is what is the topic of today's discussion. So the first thing is, when is the exam going to be? That's a huge question mark. You, me, or no one in the country knows whether it's going to be first NEET PG or next PG. It's going to be Jan or March. So when to target and when to focus is the first problem. Because without a set target, I keep on working, I might not reach the destination. So I would say keep the earliest as your target. For everyone listening here, if you're preparing for this NEET PG exam, make sure January is the deadline. If the exam is postponed to March or May or whenever it is, it's an extra time. It's good for you. You can revise more and score more. But if you keep your mind as March is deadline, that's good, nothing should happen and if they pre the exam by Jan, you will have a shortage of time, that's going to be more detrimental. So our focus and our aim is going to be on January. Keeping that in mind, which means we are close to approximately 200 days, so I'm going to tell you what exactly how to plan and how to move every day in the next 200 days so that you can reach your destination. So you have 19 subjects, I'm going to divide them into 4 different categories. The heavy ones, medicine, surgery, OG medium ones or the moderate ones like path, pharma, PSM and all those things which have a good size of number of questions. Then the third tier which is going to be anatomy, physio, biochem, ENT, ophthalmology, your pediatrics which has decent amount of questions, forensic medicine as well. And then the last one, the short subjects, the skin, anesthesia, radiology, psychiatry and all those things. I want you to do the same thing, have a full tier division based on the weightage of the exam. So now the first reading is very very important. Some of the students or seniors might misguide you saying that the revision is enough, do MCQs and revise. But you will never ever get the concepts, the integration, the way you get the first reading. That's very very important. Please do not skip that. So I will give you a rough template. For the first trial subjects like medicine, surgery, OT, keep an approximate of 10 days. Next, path, pharmacology, microbiology and your PSM, keep an approximate of 7-8 days. The next style like anatomy, physio, biochem, ENT, ophthalmology, pediatrics and everything keep a deadline of approximately, approximately like 5 days. Then the SARCO, the skin and the radio and like the orthopedics, keep an approximate of 4 days. This division will give you a time of 120 days to cover the entire first reading, right? Which is almost 60% of the time available. That is very, very important. Do not skip this. So what I want you to do during first reading is, it's just reading. You will understand, you will learn. You make notes or you have a copy of notes. Please mark them, color code them like green. I already know this topic well in my undergraduate days. Hello, yeah, decent but not in depth concepts. Red, something which I'm studying new, right? Color code this during the first reading itself. That's absolutely important for you to revise. The most important thing about it, I gave you a template. You need not follow the same template, it's just a guidance, that's all. Personalization is the key here. Because generally, what happens, the student looks at the topper and then puts a timetable as per the topper's advice. But that guy is told, or girl is totally different from you or me, right? So anything should be personalized. I gave you a template. Let's say for an example, you are very good in pathology. You're strong in pathology. Instead of eight days, reduce it to five days. Use the extra three days for difficult subjects like anatomy or orthopedics or psychiatry, whatever it is. So please personalize, that's very important. This personalization is the key to success. Don't go with the herd mentality. You might not be the person in the world. You are unique. Every individual is unique, right? The same personalization I want in the subjects, the teachers as well. If you can connect with pathology with the way of my teaching, follow me. That's true for every subject. Because like I said, you might not connect with the teacher. Because that connect with the teacher's way of learning, way of understanding is very, very important to recollect in the three and a half hours when you sit in, the, in front of the computer. Because once you connect, with my strategies, my algorithm, my way of teaching, 
definitely you sit in any exam you going to recollect the knowledge it's going to be much more faster if you don't have a connect with the teacher i would say don't follow them even if you see me or your other persons or anyone who talk or suggest them right personalization is the only key to success please 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 personalize your information the next thing is revision first thing is how many times should i revise a minimum of 2 to 3 is very very important for revision because it's not how much i know it's how much i'm able to retain and how much i'm able to recollect is what is going to give you the rank in the exam so i would say three revisions the first revision the time taken should be one third of your first reading let's say 120 days approximately take 40 days for first revision again the revision is not rereading i told you to color code right so when you revise start from the red things which means which are new learn it make your week clear stronger that's the purpose of revision again read from page 1 to page 120 is not revision that's called rereading right so here i have to revise i have to know okay this is what i was struggling with let me make it stronger so first red then the yellow topics then the green ones which i already know so when you do this in the first week of 40 days you'll consolidate your topics in between you have your gts your mcqs pattern you know your mistakes when you make also that again will reinforce to make your week area strong that's very important once you done with the first revision second revision i would say should be the half of the time of the first revision 40 days 20 days the third revision is going to be just in and around the qyq topics that's very very important will definitely help you in the exam the sprint series to cover everything related to that so 10 days approximately let's keep approximately so this gives you gap of 60 70 days that in sums up my entire 200 days back which is required to ace your exam again like i said you can personalize you are a fast reader you finish the first reading in 100 days great one third and half and half you can finish much earlier than other person right next thing is mcqs what if you students say that sir i'm scared to do mcqs if it makes a mistake no i feel bad i get depressed but please tell me if you're not practicing mcqs and if that mistake comes in the neat exam would that be more problematic yes right so here mcq solving is very important for a practicing doctor seeing cases is very important for a surgeon putting suture skill is very important for a person who's sitting for an entrance examination based on mcqs solving in mcqs is very very important 20 30 mcqs per day not necessarily from the subject what you're reading let's say you're reading pathology solve a question from surgery or orthopedics or radiology the solving is not seeing how well you're reading it's just to attain the skill of mcq solving you do daily 20 days see what errors you made compile the errors don't do them the next day again compile don't do them the next day by you do this in end of two months you must have made all possible errors on earth so there's no more errors left so mcq solving is an art practice practice makes any person perfect you need not have an iq of 140 and above to ace the exam it's the practice it's the consistency so mcq solving is very very important the next comes to gt most will say that the so first reading if i give gt you know i'm getting only like 50 correct 70 correct or 100 correct demotivating me a lot what should i do should i give gts after first reading it's very late after first reading please don't do the mistake again give gt every month it's very very important it's not to tell what errors you have like what's your score it's to tell where you lack let's say you are given gt this month and but you're not prepared psychiatry at all and you're scoring very good in psychiatry which means naturally or with the mbbs knowledge it comes easy to you don't focus much there you made lots of mistakes in dermatology focus there you made more mistakes in surgery focus there see that's what gd gives you gd tells you where to focus instead of just looking at everything it tell you exactly okay do you are here having problem please consider that so every month gd without fail and make sure you sit at least for half a day to analyze the mistakes because just doing mcqs without analysis again is a waste of time instead you need not do it all do an mcq give a gt give a subject questions sit for half a day for the gt and at least for two three hours for the subject questions and analyze where you made the mistake and write them down don't make it the next time and all these points should add to your existing note make it a one place where you can revise them quickly in the first second or the third option whatever you want to do the next thing for most of the students ask is what do i do like 
I'm doing too many things. My seniors told me that solve 100 questions a day. I'm doing 100 questions a day. I did the 100 questions last time also. I didn't get a good rank. Too many things always spoil the growth. Generally, what happens is students are like pumped up during the early half of the preparation, doing like 100 MCQs, 150 MCQs a day. Quantity is not a problem here. The quality is the problem here. Like I said, 30 MCQs per day consistently till the next exam is announced, you will definitely ace the exam. It's not 100. When you do 100 MCQs, I can bet and tell you, you will never ever be able to analyze them. So doing MCQs is not the main problem here. Analyzing the MCQs and knowing what is a mistake and not repeating the mistake and increasing the scores is the important thing here. Right? I hope you have got a gist of what I am trying to say. Last but not the least is burnt out. You have done 120 days of a stretch, continuous reading almost every single day, putting your heart and soul and preparing whatever you got to ace the exam. At the end of six months, when the INAC day exam comes, you will give the exam, you have the feeling of burnt out. Burnt out is normal. But when you get burnt out at seventh month, that's your crucial place where you have to sprint. You have to run faster. But burning out there, so I can go and hurt the entire six months of work what you've done. So what should I do not to get burnt out? All play and only work makes Jack a dull boy, right? Not just Jack, every aspirant a dull boy. Work is important, studying is important. At the same time, your extracurricular activity is equally important. You like to play, go and play. You like to watch a movie, go and watch a movie. You like to go for an IPL, go for an IPL. You like to shop, go and shop. You like to sing, sing, dance, dance. Please don't leave life. That's very important. A balance is extremely, extremely important. Brief of six, seven hours a day. Do the extracurricular activities. Talk to your families, talk to your friends. Don't lose them. It'll hurt you in the long term, right? So this balance is what is going to make ourselves sane during the exam preparation. And I'm sure that will help you not to get burnt out. And when you're not burnt out, the eight months of preparation, anyone, believe me, anyone can ace the exam. The consistency is very, very important and will help you ace the exam. To summarize, it's a first reading. Most important, understand the concepts. Approximately 120 days. Revision, again, extremely important. Keep it three times revision. One third of the first reading is the revision for first and then half and half. Third, do MCQs every day. Consistency is very, very important. Avoid the silly mistakes, improve from your mistakes and make sure you don't repeat them again. GT is important to analyze your weak areas and to strengthen them, start doing from the first. Don't do for too many sources, please personalize your preparation. And I hope I'll be sitting with you guys, most of you guys here, in the near future, after the exam, asking what did you do and I wish you will give the strategy for the upcoming aspirants. See you soon. Till then, bye bye from Dr. Anjit. Bye bye.